We've got the Vodafone, oh well, the Fiji Airways now, Flying Fijians head coach, and it is uh, John McKee. John, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, as I said, still in the Diwali field, but a lot of fireworks expected with your Flying Fijians now getting ready for the end of the year tour. But before that, John, let's start off with our, all the hard work. I had Senru Sisiruvakula in the lounge last week, the Drua. They have been phenomenal. Whatever you had set out with your coaching staff, they've been achieving it week in, week on. It's, it's great to see your local boys performing. Well, certainly. I mean, mm. the, the, the Endure and that NRC program is, is, is a massive program for, for Fiji rugby. And, and, you know, I think we'll reap the benefits of it in terms of progression to the national team in, in, in coming years. But, you know, year one in, in such an ambitious project, you know, that we, we were the, it was unknown what the possible outcome could be. But, you know, the, the team has, has done very, very well. I think the players have really risen to the occasion. And, and it really shows what, what our players can achieve when they're, when they're working in a, in a good high-performance environment and, and a good coaching environment, good S&C environment. We've really seen those players progress across, across the tournament. You know, it's a, it's a tough and challenging tournament. It's certainly mm -hmm. not over yet. They've done very well thus far. Um, you know, massive game this weekend with uh, Queensland Country. And, you know, certainly, you know, they're, they're looking pretty good at the moment for, for a top four place. But, you know, these last two rounds for them are critical because you can see the top of the table is getting very, uh, very crowded. And, mm. and with, um, with a few buys and bonus points in there, you know, there's a lot going to happen in the last two rounds. Just uh, staying with the, with the Drua, uh, something you had said some time back, it is the best platform to exposure for local players. And they're reaping the rewards. You've got six for the end of the year tour now. Well, certainly, mm. yeah, you, you see six six local players on on the end of the scene tour, which which is a great achievement, great achievement for those players. Four of those players, of course, have played for the for the Flying Fijians before, but uh, but you know, the, the, partly with the timing of, of the NRC competition, it gives them a perfect sort of lead into the November tour for the for the um, local players. You know, that they have that you know, 10 to 12 weeks of quite intensive competition. Mm. So those guys will be really ready to hit the ground running when they, when they get up to um, France and Italy next week. Talking about the uh, Flying Fijians as we get ready for the end of the year, and just looking at the list itself that you released last week, John, uh, Ratu Naisa from the, obviously, the Drua who's come in. Great to see Semi Kunatani now getting a chance after some cons consistent performance in the French T14. And Veitokani, uh, you've always been looking for a backup for Ben in the first 5-8 position. He's played very well this year in the uh, for the Rewa side. Uh, unfortunately, Nadembe was out injured. But the mix there, some old, some new, and some have missed out. Yeah, well, certainly, mm. you know, it, it's, it shows, the, the, I think, the depth that we're building across, across our, our positions that, that, you know, some good players ha have missed out on selection this time around. I mean, it's, um, you know, they're, they're tough selection decisions, but, but you know, as, as a head coach, it's a good position to be in, that knowing that we've got some... Good depth, you know, mm -hmm. building towards 2019. You know, the the you know the 10 position has always been uh, you know looking for a, for some some depth there, and and I think that that's one position where we can really see the benefit of, of the NRC competition. With firstly the Nathembi playing so mm -hmm. well at the at the start of the competition, and really a very unfortunate injury for him. And you know, Vodakani's really stepped up as well. Of course, he's played for the Warriors before. We know mm -hmm. quite a lot about him. He's been around the seven squad. But certainly, you know, playing week in, week out now, he's, um, he's showing his class. So that puts pressure on Ben Volavola in, in terms of, in terms of um, you know, who, who's the starting 5-8 in the, in the test matches this year. So, so you know, competition's always good. It brings out the best in players and, and you know, we, we need depth in all positions. Mm. Some of the players have missed that and I've seen you've named uh, the likes of Nandolo on the standby list uh, and some of the others who have missed out. Uh, what was the conversation with them about? But they, I believe, as you've said, they're still in the mix for 2019 because this is a sort of a little different squad to the June-July uh, test series. Well, I think, you know, what, what one, of, one of the, the things I, I want to do is, is blend new players into the, into the team. It's not really out with the old, in with the new because, you know, I think we've got some important things around the way we, the way we play and train and, and our team culture that, that the players should be introduced to that and, mm -hmm. and it... So, so that, that, that's, that's one of the, the policies going forward. But, you know, the, the, we've got a lot of good wingers, of course. And, um, you know, for, for Nemani, I would say he's unlucky to miss out. He's scored some good tries this year. But, but my feeling is that he's just a little bit off the pace where he needs to be to play international rugby. International rugby is a, 
is a is a step mm -hmm. up in intensity from even from top 14, and you know with his three months off over the over the the, the northern season break with some concussion issues, I think he he still needs to um, you know really develop his match fitness and and maybe get his body weight down um, another three or four kilos and. Mm -hmm. It, you know, doesn't discount him for the future. Or as as I said to him, you know, a lot can happen in the next few weeks. You know, there's a lot of rugby to be played. You know, players can get injured, mm. so so he's he's still very much in the mix there. A lot of talk about, uh, and as I said, we always respect the decision of you and your selection panel and your coaches. Why say another level playing well and after that unfortunate incident, uh, but he's been playing well for his club. Uh, still keeping uh, tabs on him for the future. Oh, look, I'm certainly yeah. still still watching Wise closely, yeah. but Wise got a few issues to um, sort yeah. out up there, and you know I believe he's got a court case during yeah. November, so I'd rather he uh, get that sorted yeah. out, and then you know we start with a cl clean slate, you know, for next year. Mm. Talking about the local John Stewart as well, very close, maybe the captain of the Fijian Drua side, uh, has been an outstanding performer. But as you said, the competition in the back line is just marvelous because. One name that I've noticed was you've named Levani Botia in the back line, in the squad at least, but uh, he's been playing uh, in the loses all throughout the T14 season so far. Yeah, it's um, interesting there with with um, Levani. He, he, you know, primarily he's played for us as a 12, as he has at, at the World Cup and, and last year. Uh, his, his club have been playing in the back row, and this year he hasn't featured in the back line at all. All of all of his starts have been in the back row. For 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 me, as you can see from the from the team list, he, he's named in the back division. But mm. but who knows? You know, we we could, he could become the world's most versatile utility player, where he can either line up in the back row or or, or in the centres. But you know, I think you know Lavani's an important player for us in in the in the mix there. And and you know, look, for for this tour, I see him primarily as a twelve. But you know, towards twenty nineteen, who knows? Definitely. So interesting stuff there with uh, Fiji Away's head coach. John, you've, you've explained, uh, well, it's interesting where we'll see Levan in Botia, we'll leave it to you, but we'll keep close steps on that. The halfbacks position, and I've been watching the uh, Fiji Away's Drua team that's been playing. Lomani, uh, unfortunately, Siru Papeli got injured and didn't feature up until now. Lomani, and then uh, you've also had uh, Henderson Loli, part of the Flying Fiji and Celeron, and Nicola, who had a bit of an off season in June, July. Great to see him all clear of his personal issues that were happening. You've given him another chance to prove his worth for the end of the year tour. But these local boys like Frank and uh, Sir Pepeli and also Gavindi are putting a lot of pressure on these internationals. Well, certainly, yeah. I mean, you know, f firstly, you know, I feel a bit sorry for Sir, you know, untimely mm. injury in, in June when he was playing playing very well for us. And, and that's um, that, that's kept him out, you know, and he won't actually be, be available to return to play till the end of November. So, so he's, he wasn't considered for selection. I think Frank Lamani, you know, we, we know what a talented young player he is. You know, he got a little a little taste of it in um, in Samoa when he when he came in as a replacement for mm -hmm. Saru in the in the last the last uh, section of our, our our test series. But and and I think Frank's really benefited from the, from playing in the NRC. You can see he, you know I see his game progressing from playing with that mm -hmm. intensity week in, week out. He's learning all the time. He, he, he's a player for the future. Henry, you know, he, he really took his opportunities in in July when Siru got injured and, and had an outstanding game against Samoa. So, you know, th that, that's what we want. And Nicola, it's good to see Nicola's gone back to Glasgow. I think he, he's back in, in, a, in a good environment for him, training-wise and coaching-wise. So I, th I think we'll see him him start to, to get his game together mm -hmm. again and, and, and put pressure on, on, the, on the others. But you know, what, what one of the, one of the things around our squad, and, and I really emphasised to the players during the June July series, was that the that, that players must really strive to be number one. Mm. And and I, I've felt in the past sometimes that players come into camp and they feel that they feel that in the pecking order they might be number two or number three, and they and they just work away at that level. Mm. But um, you know what, what I want in the squad. I want on players fighting for a position to be the number one. And and you know if if you're not number one this week, you can be number one next week by by training a bit harder, working on your skills, all those little things that you can do around the edges to to put yourself right in the selector's eye. So by the end of the tour, that that a player can go from from being down the list a little bit to to being the number one pick. Another name that stood out, and then I was thinking why he would have missed out is because suspension, right? Aaron Vasitiri. 
Yeah, Roney, yeah. another you know, you know un unlucky suspension yeah. there that um, you know because he, he he sort of opened the door probably for for Botia to come back. Mm. Basseteri playing very very well for the Endura and and also on the on the back of you know a, a good good series across June and July. Mm. So uh, unlucky that he's out with suspension, but but you know he'll be he'll be back in the in yeah. the mix. It's good year. to know he's going off to his uh, new club as well. A great exposure uh, after you gave him a chance in the June July. Great great future for him. The hooker's position, we've spoken about this in the past, uh, John, but great to see that Ratu Nason Navuma and uh, Saint Rusi revealed something last week. Initially, he wasn't part of the Drua, then they brought him in. Now he's a starting hooker for the Drua almost every week, playing up against Virtran, uh, the like of Sunia Koto, is still going strong, mind you, at his age, and two are party. So the depth uh, okay for you at the moment in the hooker's position? Well, I think you know mm. we've 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 known for a while now, and, you know, and, I, and I've said it before mm. that the, the the depth at hooker is a, is a little little concerning for us. I mean, it means Sunia, you know, has been a great a great player for for the Flying Fijians and a, and a great servant of Fiji rugby with it, with his commitment over the years. But but, but Sunia, you know, is, is Sunia the way forward? I mean, is Sunia is still probably one of the best scrummaging hookers in the world, and, and certainly you know that's an important part of the game, but. With 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 the you know the dynamic game we need to play we need our, our hookers to be very involved in the, in the total in the total game. To a party I think to a party really stepped up across June and July. I was a little bit disappointed in him last November, but certainly he, he stepped up in his performance in June and July. And you know and I'm going to be demanding a lot for him across this this Test series. And 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 Ratu Navuma well on on form from the Endura he he, mm. he he gets his chance. And and I think you know for for any of the young players here in Fiji, of any young hookers that that you know, you can see th there's going to be opportunity going going forward, and and certainly for for players that are prepared to work hard and and take their chances a, 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 as Ratu has, you know, the, the, there's opportunities there mm. to to make to make the selection. And now now the the challenge for him is is to is to work really hard on the November tour and really fight for a, for a position and for a selection in the Test matches. Mm. Um, you've brought in a couple of new ones. Uh Ropati Rinakama also playing his club rugby in uh, New Zealand. He's been keeping close steps. But let's get to the second row. And Leon and Nakarawa, John, we've been noticing, we've been watching T14 here on FBC TV, plus the European Cup that's been on. I mean, we're running out of description for this guy, but he's just been marvellous. But the amount of rugby this guy is playing, will he be talking to him maybe ahead of 2019, which age is also catching up? Oh look! Mm. I, look, Le, Le, Leone is is you know he's a he's a world class player mm. and you know it was quite exceptional the game he played last week for yeah. racing against against Ospreys with it, with his involvements mm. as offloads you know scored a scored a good try himself and and probably set up two others but you know Le, Le, Leone Leone is one of those players that he he just loves playing the, the, I think the more the more Leone plays the 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 better he is. Well, what what we do need to be, to be careful of is is, is to manage his, his workload mm. in in between in between seasons and and manage his workload when he comes to us so we so we get the we get the best out of him. You know, it, it, it tired and fatigued Leone Nakawara is not going to have the impact in the game that a fresh and sharp Nakawara mm. will. And, and I think part of our our S and C regime now is is to really be more targeted around specific players and, and giving players specific things to work on and, and when we come into camp really really keeping a very close monitor on their workload, not just their workload in the camp, but the workload that they've had in the lead up so we can manage so we can manage our players to get the absolute best out of them when they're playing for Fiji. Mm. Q our captain obviously in Guerra with his new club Agen at uh, in France in the T fourteen uh, hasn't really been getting too many games. Uh, but as you said, it's good. Maybe it's good for us because he's more rested in, in, in the 2019. Yeah, and, and, and you know, like you know, Arjen just come up from from um, Pro to do it into into the top 14. You know, they've they've ha found a tough start to mm. the season, which is um, probably a little bit frustrating for Akapusi there. You know, he he demands very high standards of himself and, and his team. So that you know, in, in some ways, the good thing for us is that it, that it is. Team are, are managing his workload quite well, so so that's um, that, that's actually be good for us because he, he will be fresh when he comes into the November series. They, they've given him a break with the, the European games. He didn't feature in the in the game last week, and he mm -hmm. won't this week. I mean, they're 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 putting their focus in in the um, on the top 14. They're not so worried about the European Challenge Cup. So yeah. so Akapusi will have a have a little break 
over these two weeks, you know, he, he'll be on some alternative training and, and we've given him some training programs as well to, to help get his body right for November. So, so that, that looks good for us. I mean, Akapusi, very important player for us as a leader. He, he's, um, you know, he's, he's a very strong leader in our group, demands high standards and, and very, very smart, very smart rugby player in his understanding of the game and his role in the game. And, and really, you know, when he gets out there in test match, he, he leads from the front. Definitely. So we're talking uh, Flying Fijians tonight with head coach John McKee. We'll be back after this break with uh, Flying Fijians head coach, Fiji Airways Flying Fijians head coach, John McKee. John, uh, I watched the, the uh, English Premiership the other week, Vernik Ngoneva, and you've always spoken highly of this guy who doesn't like to be rested, doesn't like to be on the reserve bench. Uh, he's been playing well uh, for his team, uh, but he's... Why are you looking at moving him in, in the midfield wing or is it going to be utility for your end of the year? In, in, certainly in, 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 the mix, in the mix of this, um, this team for, for November 2, I, I, I see Veroniki as a, as a, probably as a 13. He can play on the wing. He, 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 he'll, he'll be more of a 13 for us. I mean, Nicky is, uh, you know, he, he's almost defying his age. He, he seems to get better. Mm. As, as he goes on, and, he, and he's certainly in, obviously enjoying the environment up there at Newcastle, almost a new lease of life for him, probably a little frustrating for him at Leicester Tigers. You know, he had some very good games, but he, but he was in and out of the team. You know, they had some other good players in, in the centres on the wings, and he, and he didn't really get the consistency of playing week in, week out. Newcastle, you know, a different environment. He, he, he really enjoys living up there. You know, he, he, he's quite happy there, and I think, that, you know, that helps the players as well when, when their whole life's happy. That they, 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 it shows in their form, and, and Newcastle are having a great season this year. You know they're really, really pushing up the table there mm. in the Premiership. Mm. The let's let's move. Uh, we've spoken, I think, uh, a lot about players. Let's move towards your coaching staff, John. Uh, what's the mix in terms of the coaching staff for the November two? Is it similar to June? So uh, yes, yeah, pr pretty similar. I mean, the, the, we we made some changes in June, and, and you know, t two of the big areas we identified probably at the, in our reviews at the back end of, of twenty sixteen were were our S and C and and defence where where we were we were below par in our performance and and, and our and our specific fitness for Test match rugby. So uh, on on the on the S and C side of things, we brought in John Pryor and Damian Marsh, two very experienced. Um, S and C coaches who, who who work primarily with the flying Fijians, but but also have have influence across other teams, mm. and and I think you know some of their programs um, are, are coming through with the Endura, and, and Natha is, is delivering their programs there, and we can see the improvement in the in the players' fitness in in, in that team. So so that, that that's been a big plus for us, and that those those two guys are committed to us through to 2019. Peter Ryan came in. As a as a defence coach, and I think straight away in June we saw we saw a mm. much improved defence, and and you know we, we we probably made the first steps along that path, and and then we'll build on that in the, in the November in the November series. There's cer certainly more we can do around the defence area, but Peter Ryan will be with us again. Um, Andre Bell once again um, looking after the attack, and Andre is working with the Wellington Lions who are doing mm. so well down in, in the Mitre Ten. Cup there and, and looking to, to get back in the top division this year, so so he'll be he'll be flying up after the final to, to join us in, in our camp. And uh, Alan Muir will be with us again for scrummaging, and Alan's also working the Wellington Lions in the in the Mitre Ten Cup, so so he'll be joining us when his commitments there finish. Um, made a change around um, you know the, uh, the in the line out area. Um, Neil Barnes, mm. who who works with the Waikato Chiefs as an assistant coach, will, will come with us. I think. You know, he he comes with a lot of um, coaching credentials, and also I think coming out of that um, Chiefs environment, it will be a great benefit mm. for us because you know we'll, we'll we'll be able to get get certainly you know first hand input from from such an experienced coach around around some of the things that are that they've been doing at the Chiefs over the last few seasons. So so for me that that's. Um, it's a big boost for us, and, and I think you know the players will really really enjoy that. Definitely. Uh, Nathar will still be part of the end of the year setup, or is he going to be concentrating on Drua for the moment? No, Nathar's concentrating on the Drua through mm. to the final, and he's also doing some work across the, across the the Sevens, sevens program. Mm. Of course, you know, massive year for the Sevens mm. in 2018 with the Commonwealth Games and and Rugby World Cup, and of course the HSB series. Mm. So they've got a got a huge huge year, and um, Nathar's dividing his time a bit at the moment between the between the two squads with the, with the Sevens boys camp starting and. 
and you know, and Nath, Nath will have a focus on the on the sevens, if, you know, from the from the start of the HSBC mm. series. Talking about sevens, uh, well, let's take the overseas boys out of the mix for the HSBC series. S- maybe the likes of Vito Kani, who knows? Uh, maybe John Stewart, but uh, definitely uh, the sevens setup needs a few of the experienced hands. Uh, I believe you, Sandro Cesar, and Ruvakula, and also Beba have been in contact and discussions as to where you can help each other out. Oh, look, you mm. know, you know, Gareth and I, you know, talk talk a lot about the, about the players and, and looking down the down the depth charts and and certainly when we when we look to when we look forward to this year and you know that that's for Gareth to make the call in the end. But you know, certainly with um, with Rugby World Cup of Sevens, mm. you know, we'd like to see our, our best um, our best players representing Fiji and and you know, similar to the Olympics. Uh, where you know there's a possibility that some of the professional players could come back. At the at the end of the day, it's um, th- that'll be Gar- Gareth's call. But um, you know that, that that's one of the things on the table. But you know the, the first thing is is the HSBC mm. series. I think you know that, that there's there's certainly spots up for grabs. You know the the, the squads rebuilding mm. with with the players that, that went overseas last year and and, and left the squad. So there's first, I think first and foremost. Big opportunity for, for local players to stake stake their claims in the HSB series, and you know, and a successful HSB series mm. can you know set them up for a, for you know a, um, rugby world cup of sevens representation. So you know, there's a lot lot at stake for the mm. sevens boys this year, and um, be very very competitive for positions right throughout the year. Definitely, it'll be great to see uh, some of your big boys maybe have the team out in the world cup next year. John, um, our opposition. Uh, you've been keeping close tabs on them. Uh, you were away uh, touring as well in terms of looking at the facilities, etc. in Italy. Uh, how have you seen uh, the three that we'll be taking on in the November series? Oh, look, you know, uh, uh, once again, a challenging series for us in, in November with, with firstly Italy first up, then Ireland and, and then Canada. Uh, you know, w- w- one of the things I've emphasised to the players when I, I was visiting North recently and, and, and through the other lines of communication is that we... We set a high benchmark for ourselves in uh, June, July. I think we think we we definitely made a step up, or well, certainly from last year. Um, but, but our challenge now is is to have a really successful November tour, which means you know we, we've set the benchmark and we must raise above that. Uh, I think the the motivation is very high for the players. You know, of on the back of a successful campaign, and the and the challenge now as a coach is to make sure that we we take some of the momentum into it. Into our into our camp and really hit the ground running. You know, I- Italy. I mean, the, the players will feel confident playing Italy. That you know, they know we've had success against Italy down here on, on the last two occasions we've played them. Now, the the challenge will be on the, on their home turf. Italy will be um, will be a different different team over there. They'll, they'll be hard to beat at home. But, but you know, we'll, we'll be we'll be focusing very much through our camp and on our performance for that game. And you know, we we, we have a Good game against Italy takes some takes some good momentum out of that to to Ireland. I believe that we can we can. It's another game that we can do well in. I mean, Ireland. We know just. I think they just slipped down to to number four in the in the world rankings. They're just behind Australia. Mm. But, but in the last twelve months, they've beaten both England and the All Blacks. So we we know what a quality side they are. It's you know we'll we'll work on our game plan for that game and and. And work on some possible weaknesses and, and go there with a very specific game plan that that, that we, we would hope we can be successful. And then Canada, you know, another another challenging game. Canada, although their results haven't been so good lately, they'll have a new coach. There'll be a new motivation there, um, and and the trap can be sometimes on the November tour that when you have the big games that that the boys are very focused, and then when you play the the tier two, the 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 level of um, the level of intensity drops off a little bit. For for me. You know, we, we must set a standard every time. Every time we play, and and when we play Canada, you know, I, I won't wouldn't be happy with a with a win and a sloppy performance. I, I want to see a, a good performance from the Flying Fijians every time we run out. Mm. Maybe a bit too early to ask you this, but Semi Rondrandra has made the switch and playing T14. People have been following him, particularly in Australia, because of his league background. Any interest in looking at how he goes, or has he shown any interest, or anyone has shown any interest from his side that maybe he might consider playing for the Flying Fiji if he decides to stick to Union? That is because there's talk he might be going back to league next year. 
Well, certainly. I mean, you know, Sammy, we've had some communication with Sammy and he, he, he knows what our, 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 our program is and, and you know, he, he loves rugby union and, mm. and, and would love to play for the Flying Fijians. For him, you know, we we'll follow his progress there. You know, he's, he started... He started really well mm. for, for mm. Toulon. You know, he's got a good understanding of rugby union because he's played a lot of rugby union during his life. So it, it's, it wasn't a hard, hard transition for him. Yeah, there, there's, there's a bit of talk in the background about what he's actually going to do in the future. So, mm. you know, we, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on, on, on that, what his, what his future prospects are, whether he stays in, in union or not. And, and certainly, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep communicating him as I do with, with a lot of players around what our plans are, how, how they can fit in. and. Mm. And at the end of the day, if he's shown good enough form, we'll, we'll certainly consider him for selection. Oliver Tiraka, I know you've spoken to him. I know you've visited Clermont when you have gone across. He has kept his options, French national team call-up, all flying Fijians, etc. Now I've just read re lately that he might go to France. Yeah, a little disappointing for me mm. there that, um, that um, the French team have been chasing mm. off already. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've visited him at, at Clermont on a number of occasions, and and it's only only on just on this on this visit that it was actually the ASM club told me that that, that there was certainly talk that the the French set up were chasing him. You know, I thought when Bernard Laporte came in as president that mm. he indicated that they wouldn't pick pick. Um, foreign players mm. for the French team, so it's quite interesting, you know. Within within, 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 within six Fijian months, players. within six months, they're they're, they're, they're chasing um, um, a, a Fijian player. Look, look, look for Alfredi. I mean, he, he's he's probably the form winger in mm. in the French top fourteen at the moment. He, he's an absolutely outstanding form, and he's you know he's still only twenty two years of age. He's got a big career ahead of him. He he he's making some decisions around around his life, and, and at the end of the day, you know, we, we wish him all the well with 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 what decision what decision he makes. But um, you know, look, looks at the moment from from the media reports coming mm. out of France and the and the indications I got from the from the Clermont club that the that the French um, that the French uh, set up a, a chasing him and, and possibly as early as Six Nations he, he could be in the French yeah, squad. As I said, Noa uh, Nekatadi, Veremi Vakatawa, Adafreti Raka. Australia, as it is, has already got five to six Fijians in their yeah. setup. Uh, sometimes, I know as a coach, you do have the utmost respect for your fellow coaches around the world, and that's something that we've admired about you, John. But at sometimes it makes you sit back and think, like, how many players are we going to lose? Tangele Nayarovoro is a classic example went, decided to stick with the Wallabies, but one or two games, he's like more like done and dusted. But it's also the players, sometimes they just, sometimes the decision is I mean, th I, th I think, you know, th there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of elements to mm. it, and it, and it can be sometimes easy for us to sit here mm. and say, the players sh should have done this or mm. should have done that. But, you know, the, there's, you know, the, there's you know, the opportunities for their family, and, and you know, I think, you know, they could be they could perceive a lot lot more financial security if if they they play international teams because one of the one of the problems we have is that that you know these other teams Australia New Zealand mm. England France you know that they play their international players big salaries and they have a, they have by our standards an absolutely massive um, you know test match mm. payment so so. If, if, if it comes down to a financial decision, mm. I think you know the the, the, the players will, will will lean towards that way. I think I think you know w when the five year rule comes in, w which doesn't come in until after after Rugby World Cup 2019, I think I think it'll settle down a bit because I think after five years, if a player mm. has lived in a, in another country after five years, I think they show um, a, a, a good commitment to that country. But I think you know the three year the three year rule's been a little bit short. And, and the other thing that's disappointing is, you know, you mentioned those, those players like Tangali that who, who play one or two test matches and then, they're, they're, then they can't, mm. they may not get selected for the Wallabies again and they can't play for Fiji. I mean, mm. that's, that's something that, that, that those players need to consider, I think, when, they, when they're making those decisions. You know, have they, have they got a long-term future with, with some other yeah. national team or, or, or is, is their international career going to be short? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure... You know, some of those guys will be a bit sad sitting at home watching, watching Rugby World Cup in 2019 mm. and, and thinking, oh, if I didn't make that decision three or four years ago, I, I could have possibly been playing for yeah, Fiji. Definitely.
Well, we wish them all the best because we've got a lot of talent here who have put their hands up. So, John, all the best to you and the team uh, for the end of the year tour. Uh, definitely the boys a lot to prove as you build up to 2019. Uh, we all look forward to that. So thank you very much for your time.